Hello everyone, this is Bradley. As a continuation of the previous proximity fourth tutorial, today's tutorial is about a directional fourth preset. This is also a very common preset in motion graphics, although I don't have many good examples to show. In other software, it may be called something like a linear fork or similar. For example, Antagma once called it a linear fork. The principle is very similar to the proximity fork I discussed in the last tutorial. We might uh, break it down more in a beginner series in the future, but uh, today we will focus on the preset usage, which you can grab for free and use right away. So here we're in Blender. As before, I will start with the simplest example, a grid with a set position to offset its z-axis using the fork. A little recap from the last tutorial, in proximity fold, it would be better to use a spherical shape empty, so you can clearly see the default boundary of influence. Note if you remove the object, it will not have any influence until you turn on the scale offset. Now, let's replace the setup with directional fold instead. Interestingly, as soon as you plug in the fold, even without any object or other inputs, there is already a sharp elevation. Fourth is defined as a value between 0 and 1, and the directional fourth works by measuring the distance of geometry position to a target along a given direction. Right now, all values are set to 0. So starting from the x-axis origin, on negative side you have 0, on positive side you have 1. If you increase the scale offset, you are smoothing out this transition. If you change the directional offset, then you are moving the starting point. Of course, it's often easier to use an actual object for control. In proximity 4, we used an empty sphere. This time, it's better to use an empty arrows, so we can clearly see the axis of direction we are manipulating. You can always see that the gradient is located between the origin and the one end of axis. We also have a flip direction option, and it will just put the value in the opposite way. One very important reason to use the preset with an object is that you can rotate it. I didn't expose this rotation offset setting because I basically have never used it. Perhaps I will add it in the future if I think it's necessary. But most likely, I will recommend to focus on using empties. Unlike Proximity 4, this preset doesn't have an explicit animation control because it doesn't urgently need one as the issue presented in Proximity 4. If you want to animate the directional 4, you can just keyframe your object's location or directional offset. That's basically it for a directional 4. There's also a derivative called bounding box fold. They are based off very similar concepts, and you may even find some similar settings between two. But the bounding box fold is working relative to the bounding box as suggested by its name. This is similar to the relationship between center fold and the proximity fold. So here in this example, no matter how I scale the plane to be larger or smaller, the directional fold always stays at this line for its effect. Now let's use bounding box fold instead. You will see there is an elevation from one side to the other of geometry on the x-axis. And no matter how I scale it to be smaller or bigger, the gradient doesn't change. I can also play around the settings such as flip direction, ease, ease, and the mirror or play the animation factor. The results are always responding to the scale of my input geometry. Here you may have wondered about this geometry output. It's not really required for bounding box fold as a node. I have to keep it because sometimes I will use it in modifier. So I have to output a geometry. As node, this output socket is not really required. However, if you are working with instances, you will see the output socket becomes different. 
and it's actually required to use this output socket for a correct evaluation. Now let's switch to a different example with instances. You can see we're creating random transforms of cube instances. And in this case, we have to use the output socket of the realized instances for correct evaluation. You can see our outputs are actual meshes and we are generating a gradient from 0 to 1 for every cube. You can play around with the values. This is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.